The future of air superiority is finally here and has been ushered in by the mysterious Dark Star. The creation of technologically advanced aircraft has tremendously transformed military warfare, and the United States has, yet again, developed an aircraft that has proven that there is absolutely no limit to the evolution of military arsenals. The Dark Star is undoubtedly the most advanced fighter jet ever created. Its capabilities are out of this world, and no other fighter can be compared to it. Have the mysteries surrounding the Dark Star been solved? What impact would this air fighter have on military strategies? Join us as we explore the intriguing details of the most advanced aircraft ever created, the United States' new Dark Star. The Lockheed Martin SR-72, also known as Son of Blackbird, is a hypersonic aircraft that is designed for much more than spying. Proposed by Lockheed Martin in 2013, it is being developed to take over from its predecessor, the formidable Lockheed SR-71, or Blackbird. When the United States Air Force retired the Blackbird in 1998, it got rid of its special way to gather information without being spotted in watch over places. Despite the fact that newer fighter jets and drones were made to be invisible to radar, some people believe that in places where it's hard to get into, going really fast might be better than hiding. Since 1998, Lockheed Martin has attempted to develop high-speed successors to the SR-71, but has been unsuccessful. Lockheed Martin's advanced development programs, nicknamed Skunk Works, then went ahead to develop the Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, a rocket-launched aircraft, as part of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency Falcon Project. The HTV-2 project was created to gather data on aerodynamics, guidance, navigation, control, and aerothermal effects. It is an uncrewed aircraft designed to maneuver through the Earth's atmosphere at an incredibly fast speed. It would take less than 12 minutes to fly from New York City to Los Angeles. The vehicle took its first flight in April 2010 and its second in August 2011, where it achieved a maximum speed of Mach 20, which is about 20,900 kilometers per hour. Note that the knowledge and data obtained from the HTV-2 are now being used to develop better designs for the SR-72. In 2007, people started hearing rumors about the SR-72. They figured out that Lockheed Martin was making a plane that could go really, really fast, six times faster than sound, but it was mere speculation. However, the first official mention of Lockheed Martin Skunk Works' work on the Dark Star came out in November 2013 from Aviation Week and Space Technology. So many people were interested in getting more information concerning it that it crashed the Aviation Week website. However, the interest in the Dark Star only increased when Lockheed Martin chose the right time to reveal that they have been working with Aerojet Rocketdyne to make the right engine for the Dark Star. They started from a canceled project called the HTV-3V. Now the son of Blackbird is planned to have an engine that breathes air and goes super fast, from standing still to six times the speed of sound, all with the same engine. This would make it twice as fast as its predecessor. While making an aircraft with this capability would not have been easy, the biggest challenge was making an engine that can work at different speeds, from slow to really, really fast. While regular jet engines work well up to about twice the speed of sound, ramjets work even better at faster speeds, up to around six times the speed of sound. The Blackbird's engines were special because they could change how they work to go really fast. This aircraft was supposed to use a system that combines different types of engines, one for slow speeds and another for high speeds. These engines would share some parts but have different ways for air to flow through them. When flying really fast, like at Mach 5 or more, the air gets so hot that it can melt normal metal parts of aircraft. That's why engineers are thinking about using special materials like strong carbon, ceramic, and metal mixes for important parts. These materials have been used in things like long-range missiles in the old space shuttle. As of May 2015, the SR-72 was envisioned as an ISR and strike platform, but no payloads were specified, likely because current payloads would be insufficient on an aircraft flying at Mach 6 up to 80,000 feet high, which would require hundreds of miles to turn. New sensors and weapons would likely have to be created specifically to operate at such speeds. In November 2013, they decided to build a small version of the SR-72 
that could either fly on its own or have a pilot. They planned to start making it in 2018. This model would be about 60 feet long, similar to an F-22 Raptor, and run by a big engine. It would fly for a few minutes at Mach 6, super fast. After that, they planned on testing the SR-72 flights around the same time they were testing another super fast weapon called the High Speed Strike Weapon. How big would this new hypersonic aircraft be? The Dark Star would be as big as the predecessor, over 100 feet long, and could fly just as far. They planned to start using it by 2030. This fits with the US Air Force's plan to make a super fast weapon by 2020 and a spy plane that can get into tough places by 2030. Despite the lack of a super fast plane for spying, the USAF didn't initially buy the idea of the SR-72, and here is why. When Lockheed Martin first talked about the SR-72, they were discussing it with the government, but they hadn't gotten the money yet to make the test model or the engine. On November 13, 2013, General Mark Welsh from the Air Force also liked the SR-72's super-fast abilities, but they hadn't talked to Lockheed Martin about it yet. They think the high speed could help them act quickly without giving the other side much time to react. They're trying to get better at making super-fast stuff, but they're not ready to build a big plane like the SR-72 just yet. The SR-72 was announced during a time when the Air Force had to be careful with their money because of budget cuts. They believe that by the mid-2020s, other countries might have really advanced aircraft that could challenge the United States. So the Air Force wants to make new systems, like super-fast ones, to replace the old ones that might not be as good anymore. In 2030, they mentioned that the Air Force would not give money to the SR-72 project. Instead, they wanted to make the Northrop Grumman RQ-180, a stealthy drone, to do the job of spying in places where it's hard to get into. They thought the other option would be cheaper, faster to make, and simpler to design. In December 2014, NASA gave Lockheed Martin a contract to figure out if they could use current turbine engine technology to make the SR-72's propulsion system. The contract, worth almost $1.13 million in today's money, pays for a study to see if they can mix a regular turbine engine with a special ramjet engine that works at very low speeds. NASA had already funded a study by Lockheed Martin that showed they could reach speeds up to Mach 7 with an engine that can switch between turbine and ramjet modes. The challenge with superfast engines has always been the gap between how fast a regular jet engine can go and how fast a superfast engine like a scramjet needs to go. The study is looking into making a turbine engine that can go even faster or a scramjet that can work at slower speeds like a regular jet engine. They're thinking about modifying existing turbofan engines that are used in fighter jets and other experimental planes. If the study goes well, NASA might pay for a test version of the engine to be put in a plane and flown. Aerojet Rocketdyne also got a contract from NASA to work on this project. The two companies are working together to make a special kind of engine called a turbine-based combined cycle for the SR-72. While some people call the secretive SR-72 project Dark Star, that's not accurate. There's no official nickname for it, but one commonly used is Son of Blackbird. Normally, military planes get their nicknames based on history, practical reasons, or rules from the military or the company that makes them. But usually, this happens after the Air Force officially gets the plane. Dark Star is also the name of a super fast jet in the movie Top Gun Maverick which came out in 2022, but that's just in the movie. Lockheed Martin did make a model of Dark Star for the film. It was about 69.5 feet long with a wingspan of 5.5 feet. Some of its parts were real prototypes from Lockheed Martin, like the instruments and flight stick inside the cockpit. They used the model for ground scenes in the movie and to help the visual effects team create the flying scenes. They used an F-18 jet for the takeoff and flying parts and then they added the Dark Star digitally later on. Why is it so special and what features make it stand out? According to Air Force technology, the SR-72 aircraft will be a hypersonic reconnaissance aircraft using state-of-the-art technology for missions and ranges similar to the SR-71 aircraft. The aircraft will be capable of hitting targets on any continent within an hour, 
provided it is equipped with hypersonic missiles like Lockheed Martin's high-speed strike weapon. In this role, the aircraft's high speed will enable it to penetrate protected airspace relatively easily. At least that is the theory. The USAF's long-term hypersonic roadmap supports the development of the SR-72, which will allegedly be equipped for optional combat operations. Not much is known about the SR-72, but it's said that it will use two different types of engines. Regular jet engines can work okay for takeoff and landing at slow speeds, but they can't keep up at super fast speeds. There are engines that can handle super fast speeds, but they don't work well for takeoff and landing. So the SR-72 needs an engine that can do both jobs. At first, it will use a regular jet engine until it gets to about Mach 3 speed. Then it will switch to a special ramjet engine for the rest of the flight. To make this happen, Lockheed Martin is working with Aerojet Rocketdyne on a system called TBCC. This system will let the plane fly at about twice the speed of the SR-71, which is Mach 6. They tested a smaller version of this system on the ground using a regular turbine engine combined with a special ramjet slash scramjet engine with a special kind of air intake and nozzle. People think the new SR-72 superfast plane will do more than the old X-43 and X-51 planes, which were just for testing. The SR-72 is expected to have lots of advanced features and use uncommon materials like carbon-carbon composites that can handle really hot temperatures. These materials are tougher than the titanium used on the SR-71, which gets hot from going super fast. One big challenge for the SR-72 is dealing with all the heat it makes when flying at Mach 6. They might use special tiles like the ones on space shuttles or materials like titanium to handle this heat. The SR-72 is likely made to be very fast, hard to see, and able to do different jobs. It would definitely have high-tech equipment and maybe even AI to help it fly on its own. But making it invisible to radar might not work well because the special materials that hide planes from radar might not handle the heat from flying super fast. Also, the SR-72 might give off a big heat signal that can be seen. But because it's so fast and can get away from danger quickly, the SR-72 might use a special fuel like JP-7, just like the old SR-71. But Lockheed is thinking about using regular fuels to make things easier and cheaper. JP-7 was made only for the SR-71 because it needed special fuel for its fast and high flights. This fuel was special because it didn't catch fire easily at low temperatures, which was important for keeping the plane safe during its fast flights. The fuel also helped keep the engines and other parts of the plane cool. So the specific type of JP-7 fuel was a big part of why the SR-71 could fly so well. These might not be big problems. However, the Son of Blackbird is not the only advanced project the United States is working on. There are several projects being invested into, and they have capabilities that would change military strategy for good. The U.S. military has the best and most advanced aircraft in the world. For instance, the F-22 Raptor was the first fifth-generation fighter that was ever made and is still one of only a few. The F-35 Lightning II is also a fifth-generation plane known for its advanced features that help pilots understand what's going on around them. The B-2 Spirit was the world's first plane that could hide from radar, and the F-15 Eagle has never lost in a dogfight. The F-A-18 Super Hornet which is a fourth generation plus plane, can do lots of different tasks like fighting other planes, attacking ground targets, and more. But even with all these advanced aircraft with unrivaled features in the US military, the Air Force are already looking ahead to future conflicts and enemies. They're getting ready to replace many of the current planes with new ones that haven't even been fully designed yet. One of these planes is the F A18 which is getting old but is already being replaced by a new program called the F-AXX. The F-AEXX program is all about making a new fighter jet that's even better than the ones we have now. It's part of a bigger plan called the Next Generation Air Dominance, which the Navy is working on. This new fighter will be different from the one the Air Force is making as part of the same plan. The program is still a big mystery, and nobody knows anything about it yet. But recently it started to move forward and they're working on designing it now. In August, Aviation Week said that the Navy's new fighter program has finished figuring out the main ideas and is now focusing on making detailed plans. 
they also announced which companies are competing to build the new planes. The companies competing for the contract are Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, while GE Aerospace and Pratt and & Whitney are competing to make the engines for the F slash AXX. Commander Mark Cochran explained that the Navy wants the new planes to be able to reach far distances and deal with tough threats. They're planning to use a mix of planes, including unmanned drones called collaborative combat aircraft, to work alongside the manned fighters. This means the new fighter will have really good connections with other planes and systems. They're also focusing on giving the F slash AXX advanced weapons and technology for sensing and communication. This new fighter is expected to have the best connections possible, which means it can communicate with satellites and other planes to get real-time updates on what's happening in the battlefield. To make sure the F slash AXX can connect with lots of sensors, it will probably have a design called open architecture. This means it can easily switch out different sensors, equipment, and weapons depending on what the mission needs. This makes it flexible and saves money because it can do different jobs without needing a whole new setup each time. The main jobs for the F slash AXX will likely include air combat, attacking other planes, ground attacks, fighting against ships, and helping troops on the ground. It will need to be able to fly super fast and have really good stealth so enemies can't see it easily. It'll also have advanced sensors, radars, and technology to connect with other planes and systems. It might also be able to refuel other planes in the air, gather information, jam enemy signals, and defend against electronic attacks. They're also planning to use artificial intelligence and machine learning in the F slash AXX. This means the unmanned drones it works with won't always need directions from pilots. Instead, they'll be able to make their own decisions and help out on their own. It will still be a few years before we see the F slash AXX for the first time. While the F slash AXX program is being developed, the Air Force's NGAD program is also in progress. Whichever one finishes first will be America's first sixth generation fighter. Both programs could potentially be the world's first sixth generation fighter. However, there is competition from other countries. The British, along with Italy and Japan, are working on the Global Combat Air Program. The French, German, and Spanish are working on the future combat air system. Both GCAP and FCLS aim to create the world's first sixth generation fighter. Additionally, it's understood that Russia, China, and Turkey are also working on their own sixth generation programs. Of course, the US wants to be the first to make a sixth generation fighter. Considering past examples and the current military budgets, the US is likely to be the front runner. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.